like adult life. Um, I started out in uh, Winona State. I graduated with an art degree, fine art, in the very early 70s. And then um, in the mid 74, 75, I went back to school, started graduate work in printmaking, and this is me in the printmaking room at St. Cloud State. Um, I did mostly etchings at the time, and uh, these are a couple of them. I also um, worked in a print shop, a professional print shop called Vermilion Editions in Minneapolis with a master printer. We did prints for fairly well-known artists. Um, all the time I was continuing to do my own work. I owned a press. I had studios in Minneapolis. Um, shared it with a couple other printmaking friends of mine, and um, went to LSU, got my MFA in printmaking, and um, for years I continued to do uh, etchings, um, and this one Jan will recognize. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so it was not a... a a, a, a way of supporting myself. I knew that I had to have other jobs, and um, one of them was working at Cold Spring Granite. And I was, and this is about 30 years ago, I started there, and I was hired specifically to do large murals that were then carved on granite. And, um, and then this is the finished product. So, and this is before the age of. So everything was hand drawn with um, graphite, transferred on a rubber plate, and then the guys in the plant would carve it up and sandblast it. Anyway, so I did this for quite a few years, um, and some of these are quite large. That back, that thing is backwards, but some of these are like eight or ten feet tall. But while I was um, working at Cold Spring Granite. Um, went on a ski trip with John, my husband, to Taos, New Mexico. And while down there, I saw the work of a British-born landscape painter by the name of Lynn Windsor. And I absolutely fell in love with her work. I just love the atmospheric quality of them. So these I, last three paintings here, are those hers? These are her paint, okay. paintings. These are the ones I was looking at at this gallery. And I was just so enchanted by them. So I came back to Minnesota after a trip, and I just couldn't stop thinking about them. And um, so she and I started a correspondence. And she was really gracious. She, um, she enc uh, encouraged me to um, prepare my own surfaces for painting told me what kind of inks to buy, brushes to buy, how to get going. And um, so I um, I have a studio in, we call it the Flatiron Building, downtown St. Cloud. It's, it's a teeny building. It's uh, kind of pie-shaped. It's uh, right along the railroad tracks in St. Cloud. John bought it about 25 years ago. And of course, we both went to high school together, so this building had a lot of meaning to us. Um, it hugs the railroad tracks. In fact, it's so close to the railroad tracks, you could literally high five the conductor. You could you could high five the conductor as they're going by, and uh, we have tried it. And there's, and there's flat iron buildings all over the United States. Right, and New this York is, City, Chicago. Yeah, there was a, uh, and this is the smallest <clears throat> one. So it's 375 square feet upstairs, so it's really teeny. So this is where I started painting. And um, so what I did is I, I got, um, uh, I got a digital camera because this is before the age of cameras and phones. And I just started move, uh, driving around the countryside in St. Cloud, St. John's um, University, and I would then use those uh, photographs to do my own paintings. And these are all really small. My first paintings are like 
four by six or six by eight, and never anything larger than nine by twelve. And they're mostly on wood panels. And I, um, so I would go around. Um, this is around Cold Spring um, before I went to work. And then this is the, the finished painting. <laughs> Robert, oh, you guys. Hey there. Hey, this hey, is my hey, studio hey. mate, Bob McCoy. <laughs> and um, Molly behind you is the curator of the gallery. Well, well, well. And Jan sitting next to you is a roommate from many, many years ago. <laughs> and Jerry is outside. Jerry is outside. And uh, so I'm halfway through my little presentation. Cool. And. Um, <clears throat> So I would just go around the countryside taking pictures, and um, and then this is the end result. So um, so some of these I would take liberties with and um, make my own clouds, make my own light uh, hitting the surfaces of things. Um, and I did this for many years. Um, recently, I've gone outside to paint and uh, paint. I paint plein air. Uh, there's something really refreshing about being outside and actually experiencing uh, the changing of light. Um, it's a it's a really uh, challenging way to work, but I noticed that my brush strokes were getting much more interesting. Um, my colors were getting richer, and um, some of these places are. Um, Parks that I like. This is Munsinger Park, very close to where Bob lives on the Mississippi. And one of my favorite is Quarry Park. Um, and this offers a lot of potential for, for subject matter, for paintings. Um, when I thought about doing this, and this is in Millstream, it's very close to St. Joe, Minnesota. But when I started thinking about doing this show, I wanted to uh, loosen up really play around with brush strokes, really simplify my subject matter, and, um, and remove a lot of uh, detail and just work with um, uh, major shapes, um, play with color in a, in a new way. And a lot of these paintings started out uh, plein air paintings um, on site. This is from a quarry. But I wanted to really loosen up my brush strokes. I wanted things to be more expressive. And I am kind of moving towards um, abstraction a little bit, and I'm really having fun with it. So I have to say, this show has kind of enabled me to move in a new direction. And, um, and I'm really excited about where it's taking me. Um, and. Um, and who knows where it'll end up? And that's my story. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so did you your take? Hands yeah. are fabulous. I'm sorry. Oh, you're okay. I'm just curious. I mean, going from printmaking to oil painting seems so different. Like, did you take classes to learn how to oil paint, or did you just did it on your own, played around? I, I just. Well, you know, I have, a, I have an art background, so setting up a composition was something I was familiar with. Um, knowing that how to, you know, how, I mean, one thing the artist is always striving to do is how do you lure, lure the viewer into the, the picture, make it cure interesting, or, or it, it, probably one of the most important classes I took as an undergraduate was two-dimensional design. And that's basically talking about how to, how to make a good composition. Um, but this is self-taught. The paint, and you always hear people who've been painting for a long, or doing art for a long time, is the most important thing you can do is just show up. Show up every day. Or if you can't do every day, um, as many times a week as you can. And, uh, and then occasionally, and this is where it's really nice having Bob around, get a get an artist perspective. You know, how am I doing? Which what do you see when you look at this? And then you just go back and you keep doing it. I did I did take a workshop from Lynn, this woman I talk about, uh, in Santa Fe, uh, maybe about three or four years after I started painting. Um, but. Um, a lot of it is just doing it. Mm -hmm. 
just doing it and doing it and doing it. So. I think your colors are just, they just grab me. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. They're just really sound. Yeah. Uh, I, I have to interrupt you and say, <clears throat> I have been in your space. Oh, yeah. For how many years? Probably 10, 12 by, at this point. Yeah, and I kind of do guest appearances because I, I do, you know, I'm, I don't want to say commercial, but I do you know, art on demand kind of things, so portraits or landscapes or whatever. So I, we don't spend a lot of time together where we just sit around and say, well, what's your background and what have you done? So I've been hanging with her and I've known you for probably 25 years. Maybe? Yeah, yeah. Because I used to stop and see her when she was wherever. She worked um, designing at Cold Spring Granite. Yeah, yeah I remember There's so many things about. like that that I don't even know about. And to see this now is, is again, I'm seeing artwork that I've never seen, so. Oh, yeah, I think. And from a building owner's perspective, these are two of the best tenants you could ever get. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, these are, these are my, my yeah, early see, etchings. I, I have never seen that. What year did you do that, girl? I remember that. Uh, it, might, it had to have been in the yeah. 70s. I, okay. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. And uh, that one and that really one cool. I did at LSU. Oh, okay. We see the state. Because I was at. Um, yeah, it says 1984. Okay. I'm at Andy's. Her her brother does um, work with uh, metal, metal yeah. uh, sculpture, uh, furniture, what have you. Uh, and we've actually worked together on uh, good uh, railings and personal sure. home and other stuff. But anyway, um, he has copies of your, uh, I want to call them Alice in Wonderland. Oh, I'll, I'll show you that one. Yeah, that was one of the biggest ones I ever did. That's that was, a, yeah, yeah that was. It's just fabulous uh, to see it in person. And I took photos, segments of it, and I don't think I ever told you that. Oh. But I want to make run copies of it and just have a show. He's yeah. got the original plate. Because to see this <coughs> here is meaningless in regards to what these actually, the depth and the detailing of what she's got here. I don't is know if you can blow it? that up. No, this was this was back at St. Cloud State. Oh, okay. yeah. That's the IT guy blow it up. It depends on those. Uh, well, photos, photos. I, 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 I didn't have this image. I don't know. I just got rid of so many of my old images. Yeah. They were all slides. Yeah. But uh, Lenny, my friend Lenny, sent it to me, and so you can see a bit of a glare. Okay, wait. Lenny from Army. He yes. Major yeah. the Minnesota Conference City. You remember him? I'm like, gosh, I there can't you go. He's he believe the clock. Pardon? Do you remember the clock? See, he was, he was kind of stupid. The clock. Yeah, look at that. So, oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Because I didn't get it. Yeah. Oh, I can't remember so though. So he's in oh. there. Yeah. Oh, so that's 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 look at that. That's yeah. He's feeling it. Now you can move it around, maybe, huh? Oh, wow. That's not <coughs> bad. But again, it, the detail on yeah. these, I mean, uh, look at your dollar bill, that's kind of where we're at. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Uh, look at that, I mean, yeah. just the elephant alone, I blew that up, and, and it's just amazing stuff. Look at all the detail, it's just, look at the one on the And the, the whimsy of the whole thing, yeah. it just blows my mind. I, it's just... So it's, it, so I don't know if you know the, what it's, what's going on. Is mom is looking for her two kids. And they're lost, they're down at the down bottom. The bottom there, yeah. Lost yeah. in <clears throat> fantasy land. <laughs> so I'm really intimidated by oh. this. I mean, I just can't imagine doing that. And then Jan just reminded me that I bought this one, that I gave oh, her this one for her birthday. Yeah. That's incredible. Years and years and years, years ago. And you were a, a window dresser at Donaldson's. 
Yes. Wow. So yes. Lot, when you did this? Yeah. A lot of the women in her prints at that time were bald. Really? Oh, thank was, you. Because wow. I was working with mannequins. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Now, Bob has an interesting background. He was uh, in charge of all the Herbergers visual merchandising. So he had, he and I had that shared, shared background. Yeah, but so you were much more. Well, it was it was fashion. Yeah. The, the, the gig, yeah. But that's a, that's really amazing. It's got what's really interesting about even this piece is it has immediately you, you look at it and it's a story. Oh yeah. There is a story there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've always loved like the size of the woman's hands. Yeah, yeah. she's the, definitely the, controlling oh, it. Yeah, and the posture of the <laughs> hand. It's, yeah, it's, and, I, and I've never seen this. this is oh yeah, these are, and I, I don't have any of my old prints anymore. Um, well, I, I have three people three. like Jan now. Um, and, and just to think, I had to drive to Hutchinson, Minnesota, <laughs> to see this. I keep forgetting I'm on camera. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah. Amazing. I think that's yeah. kind of where. Yeah, and this is, did you come in at this point? This is, these are pictures of um, me at Cold Spring. That's probably when I, I don't, I guess you had a studio in 501 or something before you went to? Yeah. Yes, yeah. And maybe that's where, the and I don't know if we ran into each other at a art showing like a zap or something like that. But. Anyway. So this is one of the things. Wow. So this is this is the drawing. Let's see. How do you go back? Your arrows. Arrow keys. Left and right. Left to go back. So this is a drawing wow. for it. And I was telling them that back in the early 90s, they we weren't using computers then. It, 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 you'd have this um, graphite. And then they transferred onto the rubber thing that was on mm -hmm. the granite. They were usually uh, a granite that could be shined really dark. And so they would remove what was going to be white and sandblast it. Mm -hmm. And then you'd have that contrast. So the, the, the drawing that you're making isn't really, a, it's, it's, a, it's etched into the granite. Yeah, it's, it, and they call it sandblasting. Um, um, and this is a little more three-dimensional. This is a carving, and you know some of these are pretty big, um, and they ended up all over the country. I can, um, usually in mausoleums, big, you know, community mausoleums. So amazing. And then I was telling everybody that it was on that ski trip. Did any times. of your work get in Washington D.C.? With uh, all the um, stuff that uh, I don't know, you know, sometimes we just did, did it. Uh, yeah. You know, the Vietnam War, War Memorial, and they did the Korean. They did and, the Korean for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. I don't, you know, once it was gone, it was gone. I didn't really pay attention to it. Yeah. John Hendricks. But yeah, this is a, this is a woman whose work I really fell in love with when John and I went down to Taos. It was like 2005 or something. Adam mm -hmm. was just graduating high school. And um, so that was, so anyway. You can definitely see the influence strongly. Pardon? You can see a strong, strong influence. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was, I, especially early days, I was really, I love that atmospheric quality of her work. And um, what's her name? Her name is, is Lynn Windsor, and she's British. She lived in Santa Fe, and she ended up marrying a guy from Santa Fe, but she was kind of going back and forth between uh, England and Santa Fe, and she I, in, I did She was in an impressive gallery in Dallas. Oh, it was beautiful. It was unreal. Yeah. Um, and I did, I have lost contact with her. She's someone I really should try to connect with again. So anyway. Wow.